the one wake up and also get the opportunity to uh, to speak to you guys today, man. So I always pray that he gives me the words, you know, not through me, but through him. OK. Um, and so, guys, I, I, I want you guys to, to get ready, get your notes uh, ready, guys, because we're going to talk about some things that I, I personally believe, you know, a lot of people struggle, struggle on. OK. Um, and we're going to be going over some different topics. The first thing we're going to be talking about. Um, today is this Hawaii competition, okay? Um, today, you know, every, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but every morning, Monday through Friday, um, actually Monday through Saturday, Coach Ed Ortiz, you know, our senior national sales director, million dollar earner, you know, the upline of uplines, right? Um, he sends all the RVPs our numbers, okay? And at the very end is our competition score. OK, and so today was the first day that we started tracking the um, the Hawaii competition. Right. And guys, this Hawaii competition is fierce. All right. Put a one in the chat. OK, put a one in the chat if you want to go to Hawaii. OK, put a one in the chat. Who wants to go to Hawaii? All right. Show of hands. Who wants to go to Hawaii here in the office? Right. Put a one in the chat. OK, now. We're going to, uh, I'm going to get a little, you know, rough with you guys and hopefully you guys don't get upset with me. Okay. Because if I asked you right now, all right, where you're at in the competition, would you be able to tell me? Yes. <laughs> right. I know where you at, Andrea. I am number 23. 23, right. Out of how many? Um, Who, how many people win your competition um, are in your slot? 28. Tw um, 28 there you go. 100, right? Top 28. Shout out to Andrea, right? She's definitely going to Hawaii, right? Unless she stops working, which I know that's not going to happen because uh, Andrea is a beast, right? So guys, if you can't respond to that question, if you don't know, you're not going to win. That's simply the fact, right? And if you're looking it up right now and now you're able to tell me, that's not good enough, okay? See, guys, I knew the competition at five. I knew where I was at of the competition at five o'clock this morning. OK, so you guys, you have to track every single day where that competition is, right, where you're at in the competition. Also, guys, we're at 66 people right now. Um, if you have people on this call who are not on, right, text your group me or telegram, group me's old telegram, right, your group chats, whatever you're in, get more people on this call. OK, so, guys, I'm actually going to play a, a, a quick video. All right. And uh, let me know if you guys can see, because I know some of you guys don't even know what I'm talking about as far as the Hawaii competition goes. So let me go ahead and play this for you guys real quick. Give me a thumbs up. If you guys can hear it. What I'm Gather your team and wax your board. The more families you help, the closer you are to qualifying. This bucket list trip will take you to the legendary Hilton Hawaiian Village Waikiki Resort. You'll be surrounded by the awe-inspiring Diamond Head Vista, picturesque ocean views, spectacular beach, swaying palm trees, five swimming pools, and a private lagoon fed by the Pacific Ocean. When not soaking up the sun, bathe yourself in luxurious pampering at the Mandara Spa. Then tantalize your taste buds at the 10 on-site restaurants, including the Valley Oceanfront and Aoki Teppanyaki. If adventure is more your speed, you'll find the spectacular island of Oahu is ready to deliver. Take an excursion to hike to the top of Diamond Head, offering stunning views of Waikiki Beach. Dive into the beautiful depths of the Pacific Ocean in a private submarine, or zip through the lush vegetation on an eco-tour. It's gonna be tubular. Be there. Stunning beauty and history is abound. Seize this opportunity to visit Pearl Harbor and the USS Arizona Memorial. Explore a living museum at the Polynesian Cultural Center. Take a leisurely snorkel or scuba dive and appreciate Oahu's waters teeming with marine life. Be there! Don't miss it! When you're not enjoying the sand and surf, you'll be treated to a gathering of the top leaders in the company. Grab this opportunity to learn the latest strategies to grow your business and celebrate the hard work your team has already put in to help more clients with on-stage recognition. Then leave the island filled with aloha, ready to take on the next challenge in your business back home. Don't miss your chance to hang 10 to Hawaii.
Guys, awesome, man. So, yes, guys, we are in Hang 10 for Hawaii, guys. The trip, right, guys? Myself. Go ahead and write down these dates, guys. Is it blurry? Can you guys see it or is it a little delayed? Okay. All right, cool. Sorry, guys, the connection's a little rough right now. Um, also, can we make, okay, it is recording. All right, awesome, guys. So, guys, if you are serious about winning this competition, okay, and you have a full-time job outside of Primerica, if you're real, okay, and you want to show an all a next level side of commitment, you might as well just call off these days of work, okay? Say, hey, boss, I need the 19th of February through the 27th off, because we have no idea what phase we're going to be on, right? So you need to make sure that you have those days available, because the last thing you want, right, is to get to that point, get to those that week, and your and your job, your job says, hey, no, like you you can't go. Okay, I know some of y'all though probably will be like, y'all bump the job, right? We're out of here, okay? So guys, make sure you have those dates written down. They're in February 19th through the 27th of 2024, guys, right after Valentine's Day. Um, so you can't, you know, for all my, my fellas on the call, you have to get something else for your, for your wives or your girlfriends or whatever it may be for Valentine's Day, okay? It can't be that trip. All right, guys, uh, what's up? We don't know. All right. So guys, um, with that, so you have to know how many slots are going. Okay. So when it says 1200 total slots, okay. That means 2,400 people. Okay. That they're taking a minimum of 2,400 people, all expense paid. Okay. What do I mean? All expense paid. I mean, they are going to pay for your flight and they're going to pay for your hotel. All right, guys, I don't know about if you guys know this, but the average flight like there and back is not cheap. It's like $1,200, okay? It's a 13-hour flight. It's a lot of gas, right? And then the hotel is another like five, $600 a night, okay? Guys, one time when, in Primerica, when, they, uh, when, they, when COVID had happened, we had a trip to Colorado. So instead of going on the trip, they obviously had to cancel it because all travel was shut down. Guys, they sent everybody who won a trip a check for $4,500 to $4,900, okay? That was to Colorado. Can you imagine how much it's costing them per person to fly people to Hawaii and pay for the resort? Guys, Hawaii is not, not cheap. It's an island, okay? It's like the Bahamas. Things are a little bit more expensive there, okay? So there's 1,200 slots, and this is the formula, okay? Let me make it a little bit bigger for you guys so you guys can see right? This is the formula. So you got to focus, right? Not on the scoreboard, right? You need to focus, Joanna, on what it takes to put points on the scoreboard, okay? So Karen, this is the formula you need to track. Every recruit you get is a thousand points, all right? If you do an initial trade, a securities trade, like a pack, right? Yesterday I did a $50 pack, boom, that's a thousand points. Every pack you do is a thousand points. All my investment license people, help. that's the key to help you win this trip real quick. Okay, if you have a big trade, right? Trade, shout out to Ray. I know he's been working on some big trades here recently, right? You get 10% of that production. So if it's a million dollar trade, you get 10% of that, okay? For all my mortgage license people, okay? Alba, you know, I know some people or other people are, I just know Alba is the most recent one that I didn't know of. They got her license, right? You get 10% of the loan, all right? If you've done a senior health app, you get 5,000 points for that, all right? Now, guys, this is the big one, the licenses. If you get your life license, your investment license, or your mortgage license, you get 30,000 points. But you know who also gets 30,000 points? Your upline. So RVPs, field trainers, people who do big recruiting, not only does your recruit get 30,000 points, but so do you, okay? And then you must qualify. You have to honor your contract. What does that mean? If you're a rep, you need to do one by 1,000. If you're a senior rep, one by 1,000. If you're a district leader, you need to do three by 2,500. If you're a division leader, you need to do five by 5,000. If you're a regional, you need to do seven by 7,500. And RVPs, we need to do 10 by 10,000, okay? And then there's another level on it. There's the play up level, okay? If you wanna know what play up means, it's just the next level. Go for your promotion. So if you're a district, do five by five. If you're a division, do seven by 75. If you're a regional, do 10 by 10. If you're a rep or senior rep, get your district leader promotion, three by 2,500, and you play up. RBPs, we have to do 15 by 15. 
all everything that's all possible okay nothing is too hard to be done all right now once you know how to track it guys you need or how many points you need or what the, or how many points you get for everything you need to figure out what category you're competing in all right so if you're an rb rvp and above that has rvps the only people on this call who are in this category are toga edward and gabby and then willis and jay right our senior vice presidents out of uh, georgia they're the only ones that are competing in the rbp and above category or rbp and above at first category okay Everybody else, all people that are RVPs, they compete in the RVP and above category. All right. Then there's a cash flow quality or category. Those are for like the, the Bobby Buissons, the million dollar earners, the million dollar earners, those guys, right? It's really hard to win that one. You got to make like $2 million plus to even have a chance in that category, right? Um, and so then you have your, uh, your new RVP category. Guys, there's 25 people. That category is awesome. You want to compete in that. You know why? Because when you get promoted an RVP and you're in that category, Karen, and you're in the top six, you get a chance to speak at the trip. So that's for all my regional leaders right now. If you're right there on the bubble of getting promoted and you're putting big numbers up, okay, you have an opportunity to speak at the next trip if you stay focused, okay, if you track this. Now, if you came into the competition as a regional leader, okay, not got to, not you were a division and then halfway through you became a regional, but at the beginning of the competition, you were a regional leader, you are competing in the future RVPs category. You do not change categories. The only time you change categories is if you're an RV or if you're a regional that becomes an RVP, okay? But you actually compete in both. It doesn't change, all right? But if you're a regional leader at the beginning of the competition, all right? you are competing in the future RVP category, okay? Then all my districts and above, okay? Or my newly life licensed people, right? If you are a life licensed in the diplomat, you are now competing in the future regional leader category. If you're a, a rep, senior rep, a district or a division that was licensed during the diplomat competition before this competition started, you are now competing in the future regional leader category. That's the category, for example, that Andrea is competing in. Okay, she's in the future regional. So they're taking 100 people, all right? And then if you just now got your life license, okay, you're competing in the newly life license category. In my opinion, that's probably the hardest competition to win besides maybe the future RVP category, okay? One, it's the smallest. And two, people are getting started. They're excited, right? They got their life license. They're already running. All right, the future RVP categories is, is intense because you have some regional leaders in there that are beasts, okay? So you gotta make sure you're working in both of those, all right? But in my opinion, that newly life license one is a whole nother animal, all right? Because you're competing against everybody that's getting recruited at the same time that you are, all right? And then um, there's some extra stuff, guys. There's the client solutions, the POPPs, all that stuff, you know, all that stuff, okay? I don't really look at that. I just focus on the, the main category that I'm in, which is the RVP and above. All right, guys, obviously you want to get to RVP. There's more slots than anything. Half the more or almost half the slots go to RVPs and above. Okay, there's over, I think, 495, 40. Yeah, 600 out of the 1200 slots. So half, all right, half of the slots go to RVPs and above, guys. All right, so where should you be? RVPs. That competition is made for RVPs. Okay, so guys, you need to learn how to track your score. All right. So if you don't know how to track your score, guys, it's very simple. You're going to go on Primerica online. OK. And if you're smart, you would do this while I'm going through it. OK. Go to PrimericaOnline.com and log in. OK. PrimericaOnline.com. All right. Not the app. Can't track it through the app, guys. Don't go to the app. Go to PrimericaOnline.com on your browser, not the app. All right. And then once you get there, you're going to click on the tab that says competition scoreboard. Competition scoreboard. And it's going to drop down a menu. All right. Uh, I can't see the chat. So I don't know what that says. Okay. So competition scoreboard. All right. And then once you click on competition scoreboard, Ray, you're going to click on contest leaders, not production leaders, contest leaders. All right. And the first thing that's going to pop up is going to be the left-hand side. It says, choose a contest. You don't have to change it. Diplomat's over. Don't worry about diplomat. Don't worry about the Mohegi Sun, whatever it's called, right? You didn't win it. Okay, if you're tracking it right now, you didn't, probably didn't win it. 
All right. Every, people who won it already know they won. Okay. Don't track it anymore. It's over. All right. So you're focused on Hawaii. All right. So you got to choose your category. I just went through which category you're in. Choose that category. Okay. If you choose a category and you can't find yourself, probably not in that category. So play with the other one that you could be in. Okay. And then you're going to choose a report. It's going to be either on target or on the bubble. You know, if you're on target, if you have not been putting the work in to be on target, don't even click on it. Just click on, on the bubble. Okay. All right. So if you have to ask yourself, man, I wonder if I'm on the target or I'm on the bubble, it's probably because you're on the bubble and you haven't been doing the work. The ones who know they're on bump on target, know where they're at in the competition, like an Andrea. Okay. Now, once you get there, okay, you're going to get report. Okay. The easiest way to do this. All right. Is either to do control F. Okay. Or if you have an air, uh, an iMac or a MacBook or something, you're going to do command F. Okay. And you're just going to search your name. I always search your name's name because there's another Brendan Rivera somewhere in here. He's not an RBP, but he's like a division or something like that. All right. It's Brandon actually Rivera generic. It's like the Walgreens Win Dixie version of me. Right. I don't know the guy. I'm just kidding. But uh, you got to know, you got to search yourself. Okay. I search your name's name because it's the first thing that pops up. All right. Or you can search your upline's name. If you're a part of the legacy base shop, it's real easy. Just search Edward. There's no one else in the company that has Edward's name. It's very unique. All right. There's Edwards, but you just search Edward. Okay. And then once you get there, you're going to find yourself. Okay. So if you have an iMac, just do command F. Okay. And we'll search and you just search your name or you do control F on a normal computer. All right. For my, my non Apple people. All right. Or if you're on your phone, you can scroll to the bottom, click the little box with the arrow and it'll say find on page. Okay. And then you just search your name. All right. If you can't find it and you're on target, it's because you're not on target. It means you're on the bubble. Okay. You got to go on the bubble. And if you're not on the bubble, that means you need to get your butt to work. Okay. That's really bad. All right. You need to work. Okay. All right. Now the other way you can do it guys is click on that little blue part where it says individual team results. And then you have to play with it. I don't have a picture of that one in here because it was too many slides. All right. Um, so make sure guys that you can also click on that as well. Now guys, I'm telling you this competition is moving. Guys, I took this screenshot last week. Okay, actually it was last, yeah, last Tuesday, I took this picture. We were at 189. This morning, we're at 253. We dropped 70 slots in one week. Okay, this competition is moving. If you're not on top of it, you are not gonna win this trip. I guarantee you, okay? I've seen people drop 300 slots in like a day, right? If you look like a couple of places above us, you see Natasha, <laughs> right? which pisses me off. All right, we gotta, you know, we're gonna you know, just say, I love Natasha, but you know, I'm competitive as well, okay? So, um, but it's cool, right? You have to track it, guys. So now this is also something that the company has come out with, all right? If you focus on these numbers, again, these are the minimums. We don't focus on minimums, right? These are the monthly averages that it's going to take for you to win the competition. And if you were smart, this was for the diplomat. These are the averages that it took to win the diplomat competition. Hawaii is again, a whole nother animal because everybody wants to go to Hawaii. Okay, new people, old people, anybody. I don't care, Ed and Yvonne have been hyping up this Hawaii competition and they've been everywhere. Okay, like I'm telling you, Hawaii is the place that I have never been to Hawaii. And I've been on, I think about seven Primerica trips. They have not done a Hawaii competition since I've been in the business. And I've been on the, in the business going on six years now. They have not done a Hawaii competition. Okay, not a normal one at least, okay? So this is what you need to focus on. So for my RBPs at first, again, the Togas, Edouard and Gabby, you know, and uh, Willis and Jay, you need to have a, a minimum in your base shop of 73 by 113,000. And you need to add in some investments, 10 licenses. That's gonna give you about 854,000 points. That will get you on track. For my RBPs and above, I mean, my, RV, my RBP base shops, right? You need to do 15 by 15. Throw in a little bit of investments, a couple licenses. That's an average of 211,000 points on a monthly basis, okay? For my newly promoted RBPs, all right? The people that are about to get promoted here in the next, you know, 90 days during this competition period, right? You need to do nine by 22,000, premium heavy, okay? Which is kind of weird, but it's okay. And you need to average one license, 
All right. I think it's probably because newly promoted RVPs, they get that new contract, they start writing life insurance on everybody. Okay. So you gotta, you gotta work a little bit for my future RVPs. All right. My regional leaders that are right there on the cuff, you got to do 17 by 14,000, 10 by 10 is not going to win you this competition. Playing up is not going to win you that competition guys. 17 by 14,000 on average and 25,000 investments. If you don't have the investment license, you have to make it up probably with licensing, right? Or big recruiting. That's going to give you those extra points for my future regional leaders, my division leaders and, and below, right? 15 by 10,000 guys. You're in order to win this competition as a division leader or above, you need to be playing like an RVP. That's how intense these competitions are. What's up? No, this is team. Team. Yeah. Okay. And then as a newly life licensed category, right, guys, that's the expectation. I love it, right? Andre's like, is this personal? Because if this is personal, like we're, we're already getting it done. But if this is team, like I'll do this in my sleep, right? That's the expectation, guys. I love it. Okay. Now your newly life licensed category, you have to be qualifying as a division to win this competition in the newly life license category. You have to average three licenses a month, Iris. Just to win the competition, you have to average so Iris, as a newly life licensed person. Okay, Iris is not newly life licensed, guys. I, I just, she's on my screen, right? Um, you have to average more licenses than an RVP to win the competition. That's crazy. You have to average more points on a monthly basis, 215,000 points to win this competition in the newly life licensed category. Okay, that's why I said, in my opinion, it's one of the hardest categories. Okay, now also you have the rest of them. I'm not going to go through all of them because, again, I don't. The newly securities license, that's an easy one to win. So if you don't have your securities license and you're, you know, a producer, get your license and almost guarantee you're going to win this trip. All you got to do is 10 by 5,000. It's the easiest license, easiest competition to win in category. Okay, super simple. All right. Now, what's your focus to win this competition? Simple as this, guys. If you focus on these five things, you're going to win the competition, okay? Number one, big recruiting. What's big recruiting? 20 plus. Ooh. 10 plus, 10 to 20 is not big. Stop thinking small is big. Big recruiting is 20 plus. What is big licensing? Or the next one, big licensing, four plus. Not one, not two, not three, four or more. Why did I choose that number? Well, because the Primerica licensing ratio is 20%, 20% of 20 is how many? Four, <laughs> okay? So if you wanna stick to the numbers, 20%, all right? What did Art Williams said yesterday? 50%, I was like, oh my, sheesh. 50% licensing, that's, that's a whole nother level, okay? If you focus on that, you're guaranteed to win the trip. I'm saying 20% and you'll win this trip, okay? You gotta always qualify and play up. Guys, they took away incentives. For all my veterans on this call that have been in Primerica trips before, we know about the incentives for all the new people, the 90 days and the last you know, couple of days, you know, maybe six months. They, they used to do a bunch of incentives. Like one by 1,000 got you 50,000 points every time you did one by 1,000 personal, right? Or they used to give 5,000 points for every recruit you did. So you could do 100 by 10,000 as an RVP and win trips because all you were doing is recruiting a bunch of people and not doing anything else, okay? That's not a thing anymore. You need to write business. If you don't qualify, again, I already went through the qualifying. I'm not gonna go through it again, but if you don't qualify your level, okay? And we, do all do, we just went through the numbers, you have to play up in every category. You have to go for that next promotion, right? And right now in Primerica, if you're not growing, you're not, you're not going. If you're not growing in this business, you're not going anywhere in the business, all right? You need to be growing every single month, all right? So you always have to qualify and play up. And then the next one is help your teammates win the trip. Because if I'm focused on Karina winning the trip and Karina wins the trip, guess who's also going to win the trip? We are, okay? If Andrea focuses on her teammates winning the trip, we're going to win the trip as well. I mean, she's going to win the trip as well, okay? So don't focus on you winning the trip, focus on your team and you'll be the, the byproduct will, will, will be what, that you will win the trip, okay? Also guys, with the numbers, with the qualifying numbers, you have to do a minimum of one by 1,000 personal. That is also very important. 
because I've seen people not get the point and be like, what the heck is happening? Why didn't I do this? I did 20 by 20 last month. Well, you relied on your team and you didn't do what you were supposed to do. You didn't do one by 1,000. Guys, don't, don't lose a trip because you did not do one by 1,000 personally, okay? I've seen it happen. Guarantee it, okay? And then you must, you must, you must track every day. Can't be some days, can't be once in a while, can't be once a month, has to be every single day. All right, if you don't track it every day, I'm telling you, we dropped 50 slots or 70 slots in a week. I know we dropped 70 slots because I know exactly where I was at every single day. I was like, oh my gosh, keep dropping. And I'm like, we're submitting business. We're licensing people. We're doing the things. We did 50 by 25,000 last month. And we still have been dropping. And I'm like, dude, this competition is another, another level. I'm like, thank God we like started off hot because if we started slow, like this would be a dog fight, okay? So we need to make sure we're always focused, okay, guys? So anybody, I'm going to get out of here so I can see what's going on in the chat, all right? All right, you guys good? Anybody questions? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, perfect. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure I'm in, if anybody has any questions, okay? So, guys, now that, that was the first half of training, okay? Again, I timed that perfectly. We're at 10 o'clock. All right, awesome. So, anybody have any questions real quick before I transition to the next, next part? Anybody have any questions, comments in the, in the room? JJ, where are you at in the competition? Ay, 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 ay. Man. It's okay, JJ. Put you on the spot there. It's all good. It's all good. Don't worry. JJ didn't know he was in the competition, Ryan, just to let you know. I'm a snitch. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. So let me, uh, let me, can you guys, nope, you can't see this one yet. All right. Perfect. So uh, real quick, guys, give me a thumbs up when you, can you see this one? Yes, sir. All right. Here. Perfect, guys. So guys, I, now I'm going to transition the last half, guys. I'm probably going to ruffle some feathers with this one, okay? Um, and so we're going to get real, real, okay? This presentation is called Real Leadership, okay? Not fake leadership, all right? I think a lot of times, you know, we're, we've been going through the, in the RVP uh, meetings, we've been going through John Maxwell and talking about the, the 24, 21 inscrutable laws of leadership, okay? So you have to understand, guys, there's a difference between fake leaders and real leaders. OK, so, guys, I want you guys to write this down. These are the nine principles or nine practices of real leadership. All right. Number one is you have to decide who you are. Number two is you have to shine your light on others. Number three is build on your strengths. Number four is earn your position. Number five is focus on what you can control. Number six is you got to develop a peaceful core. Number seven is you have to be a lighthouse. Talked about that the other day. Number eight, don't burn bridges. And number nine, make your parents proud. Okay. And today we're going to, um, I'm going to go through all of these very quickly. Okay. So thankfully this is recruiting. I know I just can't see like the mouse and stuff. So I like to do it. Huh? One mat. This one. Paintbrush. Man, they're throwing me off. This one. This. Ah, I see what you guys are saying there. Love it. All right, cool. Sorry, guys. So you learn something new every day. All right. So um, we're going to be going through these guys. So again, like I said, the first one is going to be you got to decide who you are. Okay. Decide who you are. See, the first step of being a real leader is you got to decide what you believe. You got to figure out who you are going to become in this process. Right? Who are you in the process of becoming? What kind of person, what kind of leader do you want to be in this business? That's the first step of leading a base shop, leading a team, is you got to figure out you. You got to decide who it is that you're going to become. See, the person you decide to become is up to you. There's no one else that's going to control that. At this moment, you got to determine who it is that you want to be. It is a 100% up to you. No one else. Eric's not going to tell me who I am. Yane, I love my wife. It's up to me. Okay? We have the saying, if it's up to me, it will be. Okay? So once you have decided who you are, right, you got to look for the best qualities in people and help them become the best that they are. Right? Once you figure out who you can be or who you are becoming, you have to help your people around you 
become the best that they can be. But you can't do that. You can't figure out someone else, Brianna, until you figure out yourself. And you always have to be keep, you have to keep moving forward. No matter what happens, guys, I was talking to the, 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 or the, uh, the church, people on Zoom last night, you know, about this, is you're going to go through some things. There's going to be tests, but you can't spell testimony without a test. All right. You need to figure out whatever that test you're going through is, guys, just keep moving forward. And we got to focus on becoming 1% better every single day. If you become 1% better every single day for 100 days, you're going to do a complete turnaround. That's a, you're, you're increasing your, um, your success by a hundred percent. And a big thing is guys, you got to deal with whatever issues you have today. Stop waiting. If there's something on that's destroyed, there's something going on that's taking away your peace. You need to handle it today, not tomorrow, not the next day. Okay. Handle that situation today. All right. The next one, the next practice. Okay. If you want to take a, I would recommend taking a screenshot guys, cause I'm going to go through this pretty quick. All right. You got to shine your light on others. All right. This one's a big one. First one, a mediocre leader tries to impress people with how important he or she is. All right. If you find yourself always talking about what you have done or what you do, and you're talking about yourself, you're a mediocre leader. A great leader impresses upon people on how important they are. They're lifting their teammates up, okay? See, people will be willing to do more when they feel recognized. That's why Primerica does recognition, guys. That's why we do the rings. That's why we do competition. That's why we do plaques, okay? If someone's talking about something, right, and, they don't, and you don't get the credit, and you're the first person that stands up and is like, well, what about me? What about me? What about me? That's not leadership. Okay, it's not about you. It's about what's happening for your team. It's about what's happening in the organization. Okay, your recognition will come. I'm kind of skipping to the end on that one, but the recognition will come, guys. And guys, this is something that, you know, I, I'm a words of affirmation person. I love, you know, I love recognition. I love people talking about me. Sometimes it makes me a little bit uncomfortable. Like when Eric talks about my baseball career, it makes me uncomfortable because baseball is over, right? But hey, yes, I was good at baseball. That was one thing I was really good at. But I like hearing the recognition every once in a while. Okay, some people remember. All right. See, guys, you have to, and when you recognize people, when you recognize your team, Andrea, it can't be once. It can't be once in a while. It has to be every single day. You can't grow a plant by giving them sunlight once. How often do you have to give a plant sunlight? Every day. How long do you have to water? How many times do you have to, or when do you have to water it? Every day. You have to be watering your plants. Your plants are your team. Every single day, you need to give them some form of recognition. All right. But you also have to be careful with that because some people don't know how to handle recognition. Okay. So if you realize someone's not handling recognition the right way, Maybe they, you know, they take it the wrong way and they start, you know, taking it a step ahead, right? Sometimes there's a, there's a good time to humble people as well, right? That's why you use the Oreo method, all right? You got to have the, met, the, the mindset when the team loses, it's because of you. And when the team wins, it's because of them. If you're having success right now, guys, it's not because of you. You, in the background, you, in your mindset, you can probably, in your mind, you probably say, hey, I, I put in the work this month, Right? but you gotta make sure your team's getting the recognition. Team first. But if the team loses, the hardest thing for a leader to realize is it's not because of, it's not because of them. I mean, it's not because of the team, it's because of you. So if the team's not performing like they're supposed to, that's why the first person to get fired is the coach. Okay, like I, I'm, I'm telling you, Eric Spolstra right now, the coach of the Heat, he, there, no, one's, no one on the team's going to say it because he's probably one of the best coaches right now in the NBA. But he did not prepare the Miami Heat to handle the Nuggets. The Nuggets coach handled the team or controlled the team, got the team to be able to handle the Heat. But when the coach does his speech, he's not going to talk about what he did. He's going to talk about what the team did, what his players did. Okay? So if you're doing a speech and you're talking about me, 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 right? You're, that's, 
that's this area you need to get better on guys okay now the next one you got to build on your strengths all right every one of us is born with a, with our own unique talents for example eric is probably one of the best people person people people i don't know how to say that the right way that i know people's person that i know okay that is his strength okay that's why he's built one of the biggest organizations all right without eric and bryn there's no edward and gabby simple as that right without eric and bryn there's no brendan and Ine. simple as that okay same thing with jason and jackie you have to build on your strength jason one of jason's biggest strengths is he's technical that's something he's really good at jason's really good at presenting when i listen to jason do you know do a presentation i'm like oh my gosh like how do, can anybody say no to this right so you have to figure out your strengths guys what is your strength one of my strengths is i'm gonna know the business there's not going to be a question that you can ask me that I'm probably not going to know. And if I don't know it, I'm going to give you the answer. I'll find the answer. Okay. That is my strength. One of Yanae's strengths is having that tough conversation. <laughs> Yanae is great at it. I, me, that's not my strength. I get anxiety. I like, I stress out. That is not my strength. Okay. Yanae's strength is having tough conversation. Okay. See, guys, you have to realize the best you'll ever be at at a weakness is mediocre. OK, I can practice having tough conversations for the rest of my life. The best I'll ever be at that is mediocre. So what do you have to do? What does a real leader do? A real leader is going to find someone who's really good at those things. So if you struggle with production premium, let's just talk about premium, but you're really good at recruiting. You need to find someone who gets really good at recruiting. I mean, at, uh, at premium. And if you're really good at premium, you need to find someone who's really good at recruiting. For example, and I'm not taking shots at anybody today, guys. I'm, I'm just using these as examples. When I first met Layton, Layton has been a personal production beast. Like probably one of the best people I know at personal production. Okay. But what he did was he got into an organization with Edouard, right? When he made the transition to come into this in the organization, right? And Edouard's always been a recruiting beast. That's why now Layton is doing both sides, okay? Not that Layton wasn't a builder before. I'm not saying that, guys. I'm just saying that Layton's strength was always production on the premium side, okay? And then the recruiting side cranked up on a whole nother level when, when him and Edward became doing the business, right? They got into the business together, all right? So great leaders are able to identify their weaknesses and allow the other ones who are better at that to shine in those areas. All right. If I know what is my weak, one of my weaknesses, right, is social media. I'm not the biggest social media, right? I have, you know, people on my team like a Karina who are better at social media. So what do I do? I let Karina shine on those areas. Okay. You have to, being a real leader doesn't mean you're the one who knows how to do it all, right? You're the one who knows how to get it done. Okay. It's not about knowing how to do everything, but you need to know how to get the job done, whatever it is. Okay, no matter what, the job needs to get done. Okay, so um, the next one, earn your position. This is a big one. Okay, sometimes we get into leadership positions before we ever know how to lead. Some of us become district leaders, division leaders, or even regional leaders, and we didn't earn that. Okay, maybe our upline got us to that point. Okay. Maybe we had a, a really strong teammate that pushed us up and we did what we needed to do to not get flanked. Been there, I've seen that happen before too, okay? So sometimes you have to create your position, especially if the organization is struggling, all right? So right now, if you're part of a base shop that is not doing what it's supposed to do, which is really not a base shop in here, okay? Besides, you know, there's maybe some select few, all right, if you're part of that organization and you're in it, you can either respond one of two ways. You can either grow or you can die, okay? See, at the end of the day, you, a lot of people don't know this, Willie Naranjo, he, you know, he'll probably be the next $4 million earner in the, organ, in the company, right? His upline makes about 1.2, 1.3 million, if I'm, if I'm not wrong, right? And him and his upline don't get along, all right? 
But Willie made the decision, I can either die with this organization or I can grow from this organization, All right? So you have to realize, guys, if your organization is not performing the way you want it to be, you must be that change, okay? See, the greatest opportunities for leadership typically arise in, in times of need. Think about some of the greatest leaders in history. Abraham Lincoln, right? Okay. He grew in a time of need. Martin Luther King grew in a time of need. Okay. You have other, other leaders. I, I'm drawing a blank on the other ones I had in my mind, right? They grew in a time of need though. All right. John F. Kennedy grew in a time of need. Um, the other, um, what is this guy? The guy in the wheelchair, Franklin D. Roosevelt. Is that who I'm thinking of? Right. Franklin D. Roosevelt. Right. We were in the Great Depression. He became a great leader in the time of need. See, guys, you have to ad embrace adversity. Adversity is going to come whether you want it to or not. So are you going to be a buffalo or are you going to be a cow? See, a cow runs away from adversity, but adversity eventually catches up. And next thing you know, you're stuck in that storm. But a buffalo runs towards adversity. Why? Because when you run towards adversity and you're going in the, in the opposite direction of it, right? You're going to run through that adversity a lot faster. Boom, it's gone. Okay. Also, real leaders are the hardest workers. See, a leader, you must lead your ship. You can't be in the back just whipping. All right. You have to show your team what you're, it's supposed to be done. Okay. Leadership is about leading from the front. My team, we know, they know Yane and I are going to work. That is one thing that they know. We did 17,000 personal. We we're a four by 17,000 personal. Our team knows we're going to put in the work in. Okay. You must be the hardest workers on your team. Oh. If I take weekends off, my team's going to take three days off, four days off. Okay. If you take one day off, your team's going to take the weekends off. They're always going to do a hundred percent of what you do wrong. Actually 200% of what you do wrong. And only 50% of what you do right. If you show up half the time to trainings, they're going to show up none of the times. Okay. And don't take yourself too seriously. You're not a big deal. <laughs> All right. Just because you do it once doesn't mean anything. You got to do it again and again and again and again. And so you don't have to do it anymore. Just because you and I did four by 17,000 in person last month doesn't mean anything. If we don't do it again, it really means nothing. If nothing comes from that production, it doesn't matter. If district leaders aren't promoted, licenses aren't, you know, earned, nothing matters. So stop taking yourself so serious. You're not a big deal. Okay. All right. Hopefully no one takes offense to that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, that one was paying me to type out earlier, right? Um, and you got to focus on what you can control. All right. Focus on what you can control, guys. I think one of the biggest people, biggest things that people, you know, struggle with in Primerica is focus. Guys, this is not a hard business. It's very simple. The hardest thing about this business is yourself. You must be focused on your team. You got to be focused on them. You got to be, you got to know what's going on. If you don't know what's going on, your team's not going to go anywhere. You, meet, you need to be the most focused person on your team. If someone asks you, what, what are your numbers? And you don't have the answer, you're in trouble. If someone asks me right now where we're at for the month, I know. If someone asks me where I'm at, where my team is at, where, they're at, where their promotion is, I know. I know exactly where 95% of my people are, okay? There are some things you can control and there's some things you can't. What do I mean? For example, what is our biggest focus right now of ATP licensing? What I can control is how many people take the test. What I can't control is them passing. Simple as that. I can't control if someone passes the test or not, but what I can control is that they take it. So what is my focus? Well, I know if I wanna have 10 licenses this month, we need to have 20 people taking the test. If I need 20 people to take the test, I probably need to have 40 people finishing the class. Because not even people who finish the class, not everybody who finishes class takes the test, okay? 
but you can focus on that. You know, the other thing you can focus on and you can control is getting them registered for the class. If you're having a licensing problem, probably look at your ratio of getting recruits to people getting registered for class. So if you have a struggle with that, the first thing you do after you recruit them is register them for the class or register them for the fingerprints. They just invested 124 for something. A lot of them, they don't, a lot of times they don't even know what it was for, right? But it becomes more real when they show up to the class or you show them the login information or they show up to a fingerprint office, right? So focus on what you can control. You know, another thing I can't, you can't control your upline. All right. If you have a problem with your upline, can't control that. Never talk down about your upline. All right. Never, 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 never. I don't care if your upline is zero by zero. They're your upline for a reason. Okay. Never talk bad about your upline. If your upline is not doing what you want them to do, you do it. It's simple. If they're not doing what you want them to do, you do it. You get the job done. If your upline is not showing up to the office, you show up to the office. You can't control that. You either do it or you don't. You can't change human nature. We, you know, we had someone talk last night asking, what do you do if you recruit someone? And then like two hours later, they send you a text message saying they were th they're thinking, you know, they changed their mind or whatever it may be. You know what I say to my team? Oh, snap. That happens to you too. <laughs> I thought I was the only one. Guys, people quit. You can't control that. You can control finding someone else, though. You can't control chargebacks, but you can control writing more business. You can kind of lessen the chargebacks, okay? But sometimes people are going to cancel policy, right? For example, another example I had, I had a lady. I was supposed to process her policies yesterday, right? She got two life insurance policies on her children, right? before I processed them, I was like, thank God, right? She texted me. She said, hey, I was thinking. I was like, oh my gosh. I saw it. I was like, she doesn't, she's not going to keep these, right? And I called her, see what I can do. She, you know, guys, she literally told me, I kid you not, I'm not worried about the kids. They can figure it out. We all think it's a joke when we say it, right? I'm not worried about the kids. They, they, have, they have enough insurance. I'm like, you're gonna be worried about them if they're no longer here and you gotta pay for that funeral. Now, that's a different story, okay? But hey, I can't control that. She made that decision, that's up to her, all right? See, you wanna, if you, you wanna, you won't get real, real results, real results, lighting a fire under people, you need to light a fire within them. Stop telling people what they need to do. You need to talk to people on why they need to do it. What they're gonna get, out of doing what you're telling them to do. Why should someone double digit recruit? Not, hey, you need a double digit recruit. Why should they double digit license? Not, you need a double digit license. You got to figure out, you got to tell people why you're doing, why they're doing something and not what to do. Because what, if you're telling people what they need to do, you're just another boss. And they didn't come here to be, to have another boss. Because if you spell boss backwards, that's double S O B. I got that from Brian, right? So uh, I took that from Brian, copyright, right? If you spell a boss backwards, Brianna, it's double S-O-B, all right? No one wants one of those, okay? So start telling people why they need to do something, not what they need to do, okay, guys? The next one, develop a peaceful core. Inner peace, guys. You got to protect your peace. If there's something, Ty, that's taken away from your peace, you got to nip it in the butt right then and there. Because if your inner peace is disturbed, you're not going to be productive. Okay? But you also have to be relentless. What does relentless mean? It doesn't matter what happens, Eric, you're going to keep moving. You're going to get hit, knocked down, and get back up. See, guys, I, I, you know, a boxer can be the best, the best technician. They can be the most technical boxer out there. UFC fighter, it doesn't matter. Okay, I in Primerica, the way I relate this is I could be the best at the presentation. But when someone gives me an objection, what happens to my my piece? Do I get rustled? Do I are ruffled? Right. Do I get all thrown off? Do I start panicking? Do I start stuttering? Right. In the boxing terminology or are you have seen a fighting? 
right? I could be the best person punching the back. I can have the most powerful punch. I can be the best at the speed back. I can have the best footwork. But what happens when I get punched in the face? What happens when I get knocked down? So you know why, you know why I think Ryan Garcia lost to Tank Davis? It wasn't that Tank is better. Obviously, I think he is better, right? But I don't think it was as big of a margin as the fight looked. I think Ryan Garcia wasn't ready to get hit like that. When he got knocked down, every he got knocked down like the second round. When he got knocked down, it was over. Mentally, he was like, oh, shoot, this is real. I haven't had anybody hit me like this. Okay, he wasn't ready for that. Are you ready to get hit in the face? Because it's coming, right? Guys, we, I, I tell the story about an RVP, right? Who, in, in my opinion, probably the way everybody talked about him, he was going to be the next freaking Mario Arizona, okay? Like, when I say, like, good-looking guy, pause, right? <laughs> good-looking guy, right? He had, you know, uh, a good-looking girlfriend, right? Really good dressed, really good with his words, showed up, right? Worked hard. Nothing went wrong for this guy. Nothing. Until he got to RVP. And then guess what happened? Everything changed. Like, you didn't even recognize this guy. The things he was saying, the way he was dressing, right? He got really, he put on a bunch of weight, right? And guys, he's no longer here. Why? Because he wasn't ready to get hit in the face. It happens. Okay? And, and guys, and honestly, like, that's not something I wouldn't say this, you know, to him because it's something I've said it to him before, right? I told him, bro, you got to, there's going to be something that's going to come. You got to get ready for it. There's a lot of people that come in, guys, in Primerica, and we've all seen it for all the veterans. We've all seen it. They come in hot six months, right? They're killing it. Number one in the office, number one winning competitions. Some of them are not even here. I've seen people triple digit recruit, not even here, okay? Because they were not ready to get punched in the face, okay? You have to control your thoughts, guys. What is going in will also come out, okay? What comes in will come out. One of the things, one of the transitions I made was the music I listen to when I go to the gym, right? And they used to get on me all the time about this, right? It was not the best music, okay? A lot of, you know, Takashi 6 I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, a little, just kidding, guys, right? It, was, it wasn't the best stuff, okay? All right? But so what I did is like, okay, I need to find something that, that talks about the things that I like right? That I wanted to be the man I want to become, right? So I listen to a lot of Christian rap music now, okay? I want to make sure I'm filling my mind with the right thoughts, right? Exactly. But the explicit, it was all the explicit stuff, okay? It's stuff I can't say on the call, right? You got to stay possibility focused. Guys, I, I, one of the biggest things that drives me insane, I love my dad. One of the things he used to say to me when I was growing up is he's just a realist, right? Oh, I'm just being a realist. Like, that, I think that's the biggest excuse for being negative, okay? Oh, I'm a realist, so I'm going to be negative all the time. Well, if you're always thinking negative, negative things are going to happen. Like, when you always think about the people that are so negative in your life, like, people, super negative people, guys, nothing good happens. It never happens because they're always negative. And you, what, you, what you focus on grows. So if you focus on negativity, negativity is going to grow. It's that simple, guys. If you're always expecting the worst, the worst is going to happen. My dad used to say that. Prepare for the worst. Hope for the best. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. And I love my dad. Trust me. <laughs> love my dad a lot. Okay? But some of the stuff, like, he would tell me, I'm like, bro, that makes no sense. You know? But it wasn't until I started self-developing and growing and listening to different people that I started to realize that. Because I used to be the same way. Okay, and you have to be quick to forgive and even quicker to apologize. All right, be quick to forgive and even quicker to apologize. It must be conscious of your surroundings. I just talked about. Okay, now the next one be a lighthouse. I touched on this the other day, right? Most leaders are weather vanes. You guys know what the weather vane is? It's the things that, uh, oh, can you guys not see it? Uh, is that on everybody's screen? Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Um, oh, there it goes. Now, of course, I just hit stop share. It's delayed. Come on, Wi-Fi. 
Oh, it's because my computer is about to die. My five minutes. We're gonna move. All right, everybody's doing good. You guys doing good? All right, awesome. All right, there we go. Charge plugged in. Okay, perfect. Man, this thing was at a hundred percent earlier. That's crazy. Freaking zoom killing your battery. <laughs> well, my wife's over here doing the Jeopardy music, guys. Accountability, I love it. All right, all right, guys. So you got to be a lighthouse. Most leaders are weather vane. What's a weather vane? You guys know when you go to a barn, like a farmhouse, and they have the little rooster thing, metal rooster thing on top. That's a weather vane. What does a weather vane do during a storm? It goes all over the place. It's turning around, doing three sixties. It's looking crazy. Most of you guys are weather vanes. All right. Something happens. Something comes up. You get a charge bag. You don't show up to the office for two weeks. Someone quits, you quit for the month, right? Are you a weather vane or are you a lighthouse? So you gotta be a lighthouse. What does a lighthouse do during a storm? It shines light, okay? It gets, through, it gets people through the storm. When are lighthouse the best? When you need a lighthouse the most? During the storm. What is the, does a lighthouse work during the day when everything's sunny and everything's bright? No, a lighthouse is there during the storm. You gotta be the person everyone counts on, okay? You can't be a roller coaster. My baseball coaches used to talk to me about this all the time. You strike out, slam your bat, throw your helmet, right? But you hit a home run, you're everyone's excited. No, that's the, you gotta be the opposite. It's gotta be the same thing, right? Your pulse has to be steady, all right? Don't be up and down. Can't be a roller coaster. We, uh, we used to have a guy in our business, right? We, we, I changed his name to Roller Coaster. I know Edward did too, right? Because every single time everything was going good, he was great. He was happy. He was excited. The moment something happened, he was gone. Like five times. He quit. <laughs> it's crazy. All right? You can't always be changing your mindset. You got to be consistent, guys. And don't burn bridges. This is a big one, okay? Real leadership is never something you can achieve on your own. I can't be an SNSD by myself. I need a team. And I need a team outside of my team. I need my uplines. I need my sidelines. I need my downlines. I need the wholesalers of Primerica. If I want to get to another level, guys, I need the right group of people around me. Okay? So don't burn bridges. If, you, if someone does something that you don't like, right? If, you, if someone does something you don't like, don't talk bad about them address it with them. If you're not willing to say something to their face, don't say it. If you don't like something that someone did to you, tell them about it. Because the worst thing that's going to happen, right, is you need them for something, but you went behind their back and talked to them earlier and they found out about it because they will find out. So if you have a problem with someone, talk to them about it. All right. So getting a job, getting the job done is sometimes relying on other skills and talent. And one of the greatest abilities of leadership is likability. I don't know if I spelled that right, but it wasn't coming up with another word, okay? Likeability, all right? Do people like you? Do people wanna be around you, okay? If no one wants to be around you, it's probably a reason why, all right? You need to figure it out, okay? You must be able to get along with different kinds of people. That's something I know I'm good at, right? You know, it makes fun of me all the time about it, right? I know I can get along with people. It doesn't matter where you're from. I get around, I get along with everybody, okay? And then making enemies is never worth it. It's not. Making enemies is not worth it. Toga is the best at this. Like everybody loves them in primary. And it doesn't matter if someone did them dirty. It doesn't matter. If someone did them dirty, they're the quickest people to forgive them. Give them a hug. Hey, you don't always have to surround yourself with them. Okay? If you know, you don't always have to be buddy buddy, right? But there's nothing good going to happen from talking about someone and making them an enemy. Okay. And then lastly, guys, I'm sorry to run over a little bit again, technical issues, love it. Right. You got to make your parents proud. What do I mean? Your life means something. Okay. I, one day you're going to be in the ground and there's going to be a tombstone. What's it going to say? All right. We're all here for a reason. You got to live the story you want to tell. You're the hero. Okay. I love Marvel. All right, but my son's gonna say his dad's the hero. Okay, that's my goal. All right, and the big thing, guys, is don't wait for extra money 
Don't wait for extra time. Don't wait for that next opportunity. Tomorrow will take care of itself by getting done what needs to be get done today. Tomorrow will be taken care of, guys, with what needs to get done today. If you don't get done what needs to get done today, tomorrow is going to be a mess. So get it done today. Why put it off tomorrow for tomorrow? Don't let money be your goal, right? Money's not my goal. Significance is legacy, right? What kind of legacy are you going to leave? All right. And happiness is a de decision. I think this is big in today's world, right? Happiness is a decision. If something's not making you happy, change it. If you're not happy about your weight, change it. If you're not happy about your business, change it. You're not happy because you're deciding not to be happy. You're deciding not to do anything about your situation. It's not hard, guys. Just change your situation. We, we've, we've seen the story before of two kids who their dad was an alcoholic, right? In and out of prison. One became a millionaire. The other one was in, in and out of prison, an alcoholic. What's the difference? Same environment, two different decisions. Okay, guys, happiness comes from your heart, not your circumstances. Okay, so guys, make the decision today to be happy, to make the changes that need to be made. Okay, so I love you guys. I'm proud of you guys. Thank you guys so much for staying on. If you guys need anything, right, you know, we're always here. All right, so everybody go ahead and unmute yourselves because you guys know who we are. We are. We are.